believing and rejecting what you are creating in your life. So you are manifesting and you all know I hate that word. So do you have to believe? Because if you don't believe, you're rejecting. And if you're creating excuses as to why you're not getting your manifestation, then you're rejecting. And if you're using beliefs, that's even a bigger problem. This is a very hot topic with the way I teach because it is the opposite of everybody else. I'm not teaching you to affirm the specific details of what somebody is doing or what they're not doing. I am teaching you to literally change yourself, your relationship concept, not your self concept. Because I'm going to tell you, I have met one person out of 2000 that I have coached in nine years. I have literally in 40 years not had to tell somebody that they need to say the word confident. I didn't have a confidence problem. I had a problem with a story that I was repeating. I'm not confident enough to be a redhead. Redheads are fiery. I'm not fiery. It was telling a story about myself. It wasn't a belief that somebody gave me that said, I'm not worthy or deserving to get whatever I want because I'm not confident or fiery. When we come to the manifesting community, we think we're broken. And I teach you that you are beautiful just the way you are and that you need to change the relationship self-concept. So the way you see your relationship with everything. A relationship takes two people. Your relationship with your specific person, your relationship with your boss, your relationship with your best friend. It takes two to have a relationship. And when you stop focusing on self-concept and you start focusing on relationship concept, that's when your life drastically changes for the better. Because you are not micromanaging the outside world, you are micromanaging yourself. And we're going to talk about how doing that stops you from worrying about believing and rejecting your manifestation today. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my video. I will love you forever. I am a life coach. I am the best life coach with a 99.6% success rate to back it up. If you'd be interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, or joining my paid Facebook group where I go live, please check out the links in the description below. So why do I say you don't need to believe it, stop rejecting, forget about self-concept? Because I spent 30 years with the narcissist. I've known this man my entire life. A narcissist doesn't care if he's worthy or deserving. A narcissist doesn't care who gets hurt or what gets in the way of what they desire. The only thing a narcissist cares about is their end goal, your end goal to get a job at this company. Your end goal is to be married to a specific person. Your end goal is to have this much money in their bank account. It's why we say rich people are not nice because we think that they're narcissists because they are number one entitled. Number two, they don't care. It's, I get this, but I get this. I get this because I get this. This is mine because I said so. And that's exactly what they do to get their thing. The, what if I don't get this? Never, uh, never crosses their mind. What if I don't get this? That's not an option. They have a must backbone. It must be this way. And they truly don't care if you get hurt. They don't. And I'm sorry they don't care if you get hurt. All they care about is what they get. And they may know that they're hurting you to get what they want, but they don't care. And you kind of have to have that attitude when you come to manifesting because you now are awake. You're no longer sleeping. You are awake. So you're throwing things out there and you're being taught that you have to believe this to be true. Well, you're actually telling a lie until it becomes true. So 
you tell a lie and you keep telling the lie and you keep telling the lie and eventually it becomes true because that's exactly what a narcissist does. They don't care and they don't think it's a lie. They're like a child. I'm the teacher. I'm going to teach you how to read today. And they get up there and they teach you how to read. They truly think that they're the teacher. They have no doubts or reasons not to. Well, we're done playing the teacher game. Now we're going to go play in the garden with the fairies. And we have these little toys and we're out in the garden and we're playing with the fairies. Bracelets. And we get out there and we just get into the flow. When you were a child, did you play Army? Did you play Wonder Woman? Were you Batman and Catwoman? What characters were you playing? That is what a narcissist does. They play a character. They script their role in their head because they don't write it down. They don't. And then when they script that role in their head that they're going to play, they go full barrels ahead. So you want your specific person or a job or the money. This is what a narcissist does. They throw out belief. They throw out rejection. They throw out the law of assumption. They try 99 times and it doesn't succeed. They try 100 times. 100 times doesn't succeed. They try 1,000 times. They don't quit until they get it. And they will sit there and repeat the same phrase verbatim over and over again until you literally turn into a smurf. You are going to be blue in the face because they don't stop. So this is what they do. They come at you and they say, I'm going to marry this person. And you're like, yeah, right. In your dreams, you're going to marry that person. And they're like, no, watch me. I'm going to marry this person. And they keep saying it. I'm going to marry this person. I'm going to marry this person. That's my wife. See that woman over there? That's my wife. That's what my ex-husband would do. Literally, that's my wife. Go talk to my wife. I wasn't Susie. I was the wife. I was the property, the title to him. When you get into this must state, must means no matter what, I am getting this. I'm not going to stop until I do. Screw the excuses. If they pop up, dismiss. Nope. Reject. So you're rejecting the reasons why you can't get it. So you are manifesting a specific person and you think it's difficult. You're rejecting. You're manifesting a specific job and you're telling me, Susie, I applied for the job. I can't apply for the job anymore because I'm at my limits. I've called that position's not available. They still have my application on file. If it were to come up, a narcissist isn't going to say if it comes up, they can't apply anymore. A narcissist is going to say they're calling me, giving me the job I want. The company's calling me and they're giving me the job I want. The company called me and I got the job. XYZ company called me and I got the job. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy I got the job. The bank balance. They're going to tell you about their bank balance. They're going to constantly say, I always have money. I always have money. I always have a million dollars in my bank account. Girl, I've got a million dollars in my bank account. I could take you anywhere I want to. I got a million dollars because I'm a millionaire. And you're not going to let it go. And you go look at their bank account and their bank account says that they're negative $367. That's not my bank balance. I don't know whose account you looked at because my account has a million dollars in it. They are literally going to reject it to your face. So your specific person comes up to you and you're like, why do you want to be in a relationship with me? And they say they don't. Well, yes, you do. Of course you do. That's what a narcissist is going to say. And they're going to give you a bunch of reasons why. And all of them is about themselves. I'm a wonderful person. I will make your life so much better. If you come with me and we're going to ride off into the sunset, they're going to gaslight you. And we all hate that. They do that. But they always get what they want. Always. It may take them a week. It may take them a month. It may take them six months, a year. But they're going to get it because they don't let go. So when you are creating something, if you're using belief, 
And you're sitting there saying, my specific person is miserable. He can't live without me. He's so lost without me. A narcissist is going to laugh in your face because they know they're miserable and they don't care. Because when they get that thing that they think is going to make them happy, it didn't make them happy. So now they moved on to something else. And that's exactly what you're going to do when you get your specific person. It's going to be like, oh, I picked up a glass. Oh, I had a drink. Toast. I love you, baby. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. We're going to go watch a movie. And at the end of the movie, you're going to be like, okay, what's next? Everybody says it when you hit a certain number on YouTube, you're like, okay, great, fantastic, amazing. I did it. Two hours later, you're like, okay, what's the next number? Numbers don't matter. Feelings don't matter. Doubt, resistance, chaos, it doesn't matter. Those are all excuses that we use as a non-narcissistic person to not get this person. They're miserable. They can't get out of bed. So, of course, they're not coming to you. They're with a third party. I want them to be with me, but, you know, that third party, they're posting pictures on social media again. A narcissist isn't going to do that. A narcissist is going to look and say... You first, after me, honey. Move out of the way. Bye-bye. Go away. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Ciao. Arrivederci. Get out of here. They're not going to care. The thing is, a normal person cares. We care that we're getting hurt. We care that they're not reacting the way we want. We care that somebody might get hurt. If we have narcissistic tendencies, we still think we're entitled, but because we still have a heart of gold, we're like, you yeah, know, maybe I shouldn't do this. Reject. What if reject, when reject, that's where their brain doesn't match ours. And honest to God, you could be happily married to a narcissist. Because they're coming at you and you're going, stop, don't say that because you know we're always happily married. The narcissist is going to be kept at bay. You shut a narcissist down with stop and because. So every time something comes at you, you deflect and you're changing your pattern because you're telling a lie until it becomes true. But your pattern is to tell that lie and then say why it's not working. Instead, a narcissist just tells the lie. And they keep telling the lie. I'm going to get a new car. I'm getting $5,000. $5,000 is in the mail on its way to me. It's going to be here any day now. And then tomorrow, did you get your $5,000? No, it'll be here tomorrow. And then finally they get fed up and they're like, it's here today. It's going to be here today. It's going to be here today. It's here today. My $5,000 is here today. They don't back off. And we go, I manifested so much better when I was asleep. I wish I was asleep again because if I was asleep, then I wouldn't be worried about all of this stuff. Well, as soon as you started researching, this is what happened. There's laws. There's rules, there's vibration, there's energy, there's vortex. And all of these things, belief, everyone is you pushed out. It became, what do I have to do? How do I make sure everybody is me pushed out and somebody was rude to me, but I'm not a rude person, but this person was rude to me. How is that reflected? So now I got to go dig deep into my subconscious and I have to reprogram my subconscious so strangers are nice to me. I grew up in Chicago. You drive down the expressway. You're on the Kennedy Expressway and you're driving downtown. Somebody cuts you off. You road rage them. Literally, you road rage them. You get to work and you're like, thank God I didn't get in an accident. Oh, I'm so good. I hope that person got to work okay. 
oh man, I was so angry at that person because of what they did. It totally ruined my day. That's exactly what we're doing with manifesting. We're road raging it. Well, I saw my specific person and he was uh, posting pictures on social media with a third party. I saw my specific person and now he's engaged to somebody else. I wanted him to marry me, but he's engaged to somebody else. Road rage. I am not the coach that is going to sit here and tell you to micromanage them. When somebody brings me flowers, I want them to bring me flowers as a surprise. Because if you're bringing me flowers and I had to affirm, he brings me flowers, he brings me flowers, he brings me flowers, he brings me flowers, he brings me flowers. He brings me flowers I don't want those flowers. They're not going to make me happy. They're not going to make me feel special. If you are micromanaging that they bring you a free cup of coffee, again, I don't want that cup of coffee. I got a free cup of coffee this morning. My daughter and I took little one to school today and uh, dropped her off at school and he needed to go to Walmart to get um, the things that you have to have in the house. Toilet paper, deodorant. And I go into Walmart. We got coffee on the way to Walmart. Go into Walmart and I get my stuff. I come out of Walmart, get in the car, we come home, we got corned beef and cabbage going. It's St. Patrick's Day here. And in Chicago, we dye the river green. And it's the coolest thing in the world because they use a aquatic, I believe that's how it's pronounced, they use a uh, marine friendly dye. And every year they turn the river green. So they go in with gallons and gallons of green color and a section of the river turns green. And we have a St. Patrick's Day parade and people eat corned beef and cabbage and boiled potatoes and they get drunk. Well, here's manifesting. How do you make the corned beef, cabbage and potatoes? My mother-in-law would put it all in one pot. So she would cook the corned beef all day and then when it was time to add the cabbage and the potatoes, she would throw it in the water with the corned beef. When it came out, everybody ate it because it was corned beef and cabbage and boiled potatoes. In our house, it was not just for St. Patty's Day. We would do it any time of the year, but always on St. Patty's Day because it was their anniversary. So then I come in. I don't know how to make corned beef and cabbage and potatoes. She's sick. I'm like, Mom, how do I make corned beef and cabbage? I want to make sure you and Dad get, get your dinner tonight. And she says, well, you got to boil the corned beef all day. She said, put it on a low flame on the gas stove. You might have to keep adding some water to it so it doesn't get dried out. But it takes hours and hours and hours to cook. She starts it at like 9 o'clock in the morning. We eat dinner at 6 o'clock at night. Easy. I can do that. Just watch a pot of water all day long. I get to the point where I got to make cabbage and potatoes. So me, I go get two other pans. I fill them with water. I dice up the, I, I chunk the potatoes and put it in the water. I chopped up the corn, the cabbage and put it in the other pan. I threw in some butter and um, a little bit of beer because that's how they like their, uh, I don't know why, they love beer. So I just threw in some beer. I thought, okay, I'll see how this tastes. Sit down at the table to eat dinner. Mom gets mad because dad says, this is the best corned beef and cabbage he's ever had. And mom's like, he's like, what did you do? And I said, I just cooked it. I did what mom said. And mom didn't tell me it all went in one pan. And he went on and on about how the cabbage and the potatoes weren't covered in grease. Manifesting. There's two different recipes right there for corned beef and cabbage. Mom got mad, ruined her anniversary. And after that, I always made corned beef and cabbage because they liked mine better, which hurt her feelings. And that makes us feel bad because we hurt somebody we love. Well, the person who hurt us still makes us feel bad. So we're hurting them back by saying things like, you must text me. You must call me. You're miserable without me. The only time you're happy is when you're with me. That's hurting them back and they don't want to show up for us. So when you let go of believing and you let go of rejecting your relationship, you become narcissistic. And that's not a bad thing, especially if you need a job or the money to pay your rent or your car. Whenever you need something and a need must be met, you literally pick up those narcissistic 
traits naturally and you're like i get the money to pay the rent i got the money to pay the rent i got the money to pay the rent the rent money just magically showed up i don't know how it showed up but it showed up because that's what a narcissist is going to do and we get like that so we're rampaging our affirmations because it's a must that the situation changes so when you rampage them you're doing the same thing that has nothing to do with belief. That is single-mindedly focused on getting your desire. The difference is, are you saying it must change, it must change, and I get to be happily married to my specific person. So you are manifesting your specific person. Are you saying happily married, happily married, happily married, or are you saying fucking married? Because there's a huge difference. If you're saying fucking married, they're sending out this nasty vibration, this nasty energy into the one consciousness and they're pulling back. But if you're saying happily married, happily married, happily married, happily married, they're leaning in. So what I teach you is the narcissistic tricks with a loving twist. So when you want something, like a job, you can affirm, I got the job, I got the job, XYZ company hired me. Because that's what a narcissist is going to do. And when somebody comes out and goes, well, what's your start date? I'll let you know when I start. I'll let you know when I get my training date. Because most companies train you today. So if you wanted to get a job, you're like, I got my start date, I got my start date, I got my start date. Because that's what a narcissist would do. I got my check, I got the money, I got this, I got that. And when somebody comes at them and says, really, I didn't see a check in the mail today. Oh, but it's on its way. You must have missed it. Are you sure you checked all the mail? Because I know it's coming. They don't let go. They bite down and they tell that lie until it literally shows up. And to them, it's not a lie. So if you're walking around going, oh, I'm telling a lie until it becomes true, that's another rejection. I have a bracelet on, I have a watch on over here and I put a bracelet band on it today. I have a clicker, I have a glass of pop, right? What do you have? Your words, your thoughts, your imagination, your feelings. Those are what you have. And if you're doing like I am and you're walking around going, you know, I'm not, I'm not confident enough to be a redhead. I don't have that fiery personality. Well, apparently I do because I'm going against all the clickbait stuff that's telling you to be obsessed, to make them miserable in order for them to show up for you. I don't want a miserable specific person. I want a fun, loving, respectful relationship. Another video that my son told me about, he said he saw a video that said if the person doesn't love you, if the person loves you, they're going to fight with you. I don't want to fight. I, I did that for years. I want a relationship that brings value to my life. And fighting is not value. Fighting is some reason to reject the relationship. You want to fight with me all the time? My father-in-law was a cop and his dad always said, fight, God damn it, I hate peace. I love peace. I'm not fighting. I don't beg. I don't chase. I don't fight. If you are coming at me, I'm going to tell you, stop yelling at me. If you want to treat me like that, then you need to walk away until you can come back and talk to me calmly because I'm not finishing this conversation. Boundaries are your peace. And if you're fighting with this person, they're violating your boundaries. If you are arguing constantly, why do you want to be in a relationship where all you do is fight? Because fighting's not fun. There's a whole lot of other things that I could do in my life other than fight. I'd rather be single than spend another 30 years with somebody fighting all the time. Because fighting to me equals control. And your specific person is rejecting you, so you're trying to control the relationship. And you're doing all of these things to force it. Do you know that love goes under the radar? And it hits them with a bomb. 
that is so powerful and so explosive that they can't resist. And I don't resonate with a lot of people because they're not coming from love. So if you want that amazing relationship and you want to be happily married, change your story. Stop focusing on the rules and the regulations of the manifesting community because they only work if you say they work. If you're changing your self-concept and you're walking around saying, I love myself, I'm an amazing person, I'm beautiful, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm happy, that should be 100% for you. And that is not going to change the quality of your relationship because I was healthy, I was happy, but I had a lousy relationship with my ex-husband. You're saying these things and they're rejecting your manifestation. I've been working on my self-concept for six months. So 90% of the time you're walking around working on your self-concept and you're not seeing any changes in the world. People are still being rude. Things are not showing up for you the way that you want. The other 10%, you're not affirming anything because you are tasked on something else that needs your attention. Well, here's the thing, 95% of the day, you are either undoing your manifestation or you are cementing your manifestation as done. 5% of the day, you are affirming or talking bad about your manifestation. So 5% of the day, you say your phrases, your questions, and your statements. 95% of the day are your words backing up what you are saying. 95% of the day you are saying your phrases, questions, and statements, is that other 5% doing it? Because as soon as you get the thought of being with this person, that job, that car, that house, the bank balance, it's done. It's 95% done. So you have 5% to bridge. So let's put this in steps. If you have to take a hundred steps to get your specific person, as soon as you thought, I want to marry that person, you took 95 steps. So you are literally five steps from your finish line. And you're talking about why it goes wrong. You are rejecting your manifestation. A narcissist doesn't care what goes wrong. They don't care what the million people have to do to bring you whatever it is you desire. A narcissist today uses Amazon. I get my stuff like Amazon in two days. 24 hours, 48 hours max, my things show up. You know what? I want this. It's going to show up in 48 hours. And they keep saying it's showing up. It's here. It's being delivered. It's on that delivery truck. And they don't let it go until it actually knocks on their door and proves to them that it is there. And then they'll turn around and go, I told you I was going to do it. See, I had no choice. I had to do this. This is the only choice I had, and that was to bring this in. So I already teach you how to do that. There's one choice. Give them the free will to show up for you in the way you need. And by giving them the free will, your story they're not texting me. They ignore my text messages. Give them the free will to respond. They are only texting you a certain type of message. Give them the free will to send you other types of text messages. They don't call you. Give them the free will to call you. Changed your story. They don't text me. Now they have free will and they text me all the time. They don't call me, but now they have free will and they call me all the time. They don't take me out to, on dates, but now they have free will. They take me out on all kinds of dates. I can't get a proposal, but now I give them the free will to propose. I give them the free will to show up and meet my needs, to make sure that my boundaries are honored and that their value that they're bringing to my relationship is what I need. So, I don't worry about what they're doing. And before you were asleep and you woke up, you didn't care about these rules and regulations. You just single-mindedly focused 
there was one choice and you persisted until that choice became your new reality. It's not complicated, guys. It's easy. And the more you let go of these rules and regulations, the easier your life becomes. And then you get to spend the rest of your life enjoying what you created. I love you. Have an absolutely positively amazing St. Patty's Day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how I am drastically, ah, drastically changing your life for the better.